All right, so now that we've created the markup for our task manager, the first um, logic I want us to add is to, let me close this up. The first logic I want us to add is to add the functionality to actually create a task. So let's do that quickly. I gotta come here to my task list, the JS, and I'm gonna create a state. So let me just come down here and say, use, use state and i'll use a use state snippet and let me see if i can auto import the use state like so and i'll import that from react okay so that's possible now this state i'm going to give it a name of form data so form data and then here i'm just going to say set form data like so and this form data is actually going to be an object because remember our state has two properties it has a name property which i'm going to set initially to an empty string then it also has a completed uh, property which i'm going to set initially to false and you remember that's what we did actually in the back end we set the default for the completed to false so now we've created this form data but i would like to destructure out this name from the form data so i'll just do that right below here i'll say const and let's destructure and get out the name property so that we can use it directly and i'll set that to be equal to form data yeah great the next function i'm going to write will be the function to um handle the input change so remember if you come to your task form you'll notice that we sent the a couple of props so there's the create task which is a function that we've not created but there is a name which we've now just created it's a name state and then there's this handle input change which is supposed to handle the changes that occur when we type in the form input so let's do that quickly so for that i am going to come back to my task list and then just below here i'll create an arrow function let's tap that and the arrow function will have the same name so handle impute change yeah so that and i'll give it an e events parameter and the first thing you want to do is you want to prevent the default behavior of the form reloading oh no 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 this is not even the <laughs> it's when you want to submit the form that you do that so but this e is to get the events.target property for this particular form so here i'll say const and i'm just going to destructure the name and the value because the event.target has both the name and the value property so there's event.target.value there's event.target.name so i'm just destructuring it out and setting it to be equal to event.target so that's where i'm destructuring it from all right so now in this handle impute change all i'm just going to do is i'll just use this set form data this setter function i'll come here and say set form data open that up remember this form data where is it yeah this form data is an object it has two properties the only property i'm interested in changing at this point is the name property which is this guy here i'm not interested in changing this completed property so what i'll do first is that i will just open the object syntax and i will first grab all the uh existing properties of the form data so i'll do dot 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 form data using the spread operator then i will now change the name so here i'll use the this uh, syntax here i'll say name and then i'll set it to the value that is entered by the user okay all right great so now that i've created this name state and the handle input change function i can now pass it as a prop to my task form here all right so i'll come here and say name and i'm going to set it to be name and then also the handle impute change it's also going to point to handle impute change okay right great so now if you go back to let's save this so if you go back to the task form you realize that we've been able to send two out of the three props so we've sent the name prop and we've also sent the handle impute change the last thing for us to do though is to create this task function and send it here as well so i'll come back to my task list 
and then i'll create the task function so i've got to come here i'll just come below yeah so below this handle input change i'll just create an arrow function or it's actually going to be an asynchronous arrow function and i'm going to call that create task so you see i have a lot of shortcuts for the things i do just to make my life a little bit easier okay so now let's break this down now this create tax the first thing we want to do is we want to prevent the default behavior of the form before we actually start writing the content of the function here maybe we should just push it as the prop so let's pass it i'll say create task and i'll set that to be equal to the create task function sorry so that's going to be create task as well great so now i've sent it to the form so now the first thing i want to do is i want to make sure that my setup is correct so first off i'll do event dot prevent default like so and call that then i will log my form data to the console so here i'm just going to say log and then i'll just push my form data to the console so technically what we are trying to do is that when you add something in this text field and you click on add we want to have that in our console as simple as that i'll save that and i don't know has it compiled i think it has so i'll just press f12 here to inspect this form and oh, oh i think i want it at the bottom because of space okay great so let's just make sure we are in our console so console yeah and basically what i want to do is i just want to type something here you know what this is too small let me just expand it and have all the space i need uh stock that to the left and so i just got to type something here so here i'm just going to say test and then i'll click on add and voila so you see here we have this object that says name test completed false so what that means is that this our create task setup is actually in the right track it's correct now what do we want to do though well let's come down here and i don't want to keep the console.log so i'll just get rid of it i'm going to add some form of validation so i'll just say that if the name is equal to an empty string let's open this up then what do i want to do well i want to definitely cancel out of the process so i'll say return and remember we installed react toastify so i'm going to use that right here so i'll say toast dot error and the error message is just going to be i'll just say input field cannot be empty so input field field cannot be empty yeah so that's it save and then let's try it out so i'm going to try to submit this form without anything here and let's see what happens oh okay this so you see input field cannot be empty great so remember that we also need to make sure we import this react uh toastify so if you come up here you see i auto imported it from react toastify great so after we've you know added this simple validation then i can now come here and uh, do a try catch block so i'll say try catch and then i'm going to use axios here so what that means is that we're going to need to import axios from axios so axios from axios yeah great so in my try block i'm just going to say await and i'm using await because remember we made this asynchronous okay so here i'm going to say await axios dot and what kind of request is it going to be when we want to add something to the server well it's going to be a post request so i'll say axios dot post and then i'll open my parenthesis now inside of my parenthesis there are some things we need to specify the first is the url that you want to make that request to and remember in our back end we um let me just grab the url okay i do know the new the url let me just grab it from insomnia so where is it create a task all right so this is the url we want to create a task to so let me just copy that and then i'm just going to maybe paste it somewhere here so that we can just have access to it first 
um, I'll just have a comment and then I'll just paste it here. Yeah? So this is the URL I want to make a post request to. So for now, to keep things simple, I'm just going to put that URL here. So I'll just say Control V to paste the URL and then I'll add a comma. Now the next um, argument you want to give this uh, method here is that you want to specify the data that you want to send to the server so what data do we want to send to the server well it's in this our uh, form data states so here i'm just going to after my comma here yeah i'm just going to add my form data okay now that's it basically then when we've submitted the data when we've added this data to the database it makes sense for us to clear the form let me bring this guy down so we want to clear this form so basically to do that i'll just come down here and then i'll just say set form data open that up and it's an object so let's write our object syntax and then i'll just say dot 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 form data so whatever we had there before comma and then i'll set the name property to an empty string so i've cleared the form then if there is any error i just want to log that error so i'll just say toast and it should be actually toast.error and then i'll just type my error dot message so this is basically um a simple way for us to add uh, our data to the database now there's one problem though if you try to do this in this manner you're going to get an error and you're going to get an error because number one there are two reasons why you get an error number one we've not we're not running our back end so currently we're just running the front end so to run our back end i'm just going to open another terminal so this is currently in the front end so what am i going to do i'm going to cd dot dot to go back all right so right now i'm in the main task app then i will now run my back end so how am i going to run my back end it's npm run back end remember the script we added i'll hit enter and that should start up our back end all right so now we've started the back end but there's still one more thing that will make this um process through an error and i want you to see it before we fix it so i'm going to come here and i'll try to add a task so let me just add my name and then i'll click on add task now watch what happens so you see i get this network error and if you know i can actually just do a console.log of the error so that you can see so i'll log the error to the console i'll save that and let's try it again and okay so you see i get the network error and if you expand our console you see here that we have this message network error Basically, Axios is just pushing out this error so that we can just have some information about it. But basically, what the error we have is about cores. So there's a concept in full stack development known as cores, C-O-R-S. Cores stands for cross-origin resource sharing. And I'll show you what it is and how to solve it. So if you come to the back end of our website, you'll notice that the URL of the front end and the back end they are different so this is localhost 3000 for the front end of our website whereas the back end is on port localhost port 5000 when you want to share resources between the front end and your back end and the url is different there's um, a network that's kind of a http method that prevents the sharing of resources except you expressly specify that you want to allow that so if you come to the back, uh, the server.js here, there is an express middleware that we can use to solve this problem. So I'll just come down here and then I'll say app.use. It's a custom middleware that comes with express. And the name of that uh, middleware is cores, C-O-R-S. So C-O-R-S and I'm going to open it up with, sorry, I'll just open it, uh, open it up with a parenthesis. And this cores is going to take an object. If you open the object, you can now add a property. So the property I want to add is called origin. 
and the origin i can just set it to be the url of my front end for example so if i want to be able to accept resource from the front end all i just need to do is to point to localhost 3000 all right so that will just allow my front end to be able to send data to the back end but because i would also want to add like the url with, to which i deploy this application later then I'll just delete this instead and make it an array. This array can now have several um, items inside of it. So I'll paste the localhost 3000 and subsequently when I add, when I deploy my application to maybe Heroku, I can now, you know, add the Heroku URL somewhere here. Okay. All right. So that's basically how this works. So now I can go ahead and save. And by the way, if you want your backend to be able to accept request from anywhere on the net all you just need to do is to just get rid of everything inside here like this and just say app.use and say cores that's all you need to do if you save that then you'll be able to accept requests from any url okay so i wonder what this problem is let me just look at it and be sure oh okay i need to install cores it's some is a package i need to install so let me just quickly do that as well i'll click on this plus icon and then I'll install cores. Okay, so npm install and cores. Okay, I think there's something wrong here. So npm install cores like so. Yeah, and then just hit enter, and it will just install cores for on our application. Then you just need to import it so that we can use it in the back end. So while it's installing, I'm just going to come here to the top and maybe after express, I or maybe at the bottom here, since I'll just say const and cores, that's going to be equal to require you and I'll just say cores. Okay, so that's it basically. And then I can go ahead and save. All right, so you see, okay, let's come back to the back end. Aha, so you see the backend has started. Now let's come here to the front end and try to add this one more time. Since we now have cores, I'll click add. Oh, I'm, I'm still getting a network error. Okay. Oh, so I reckon the problem here. So I need to actually put this cores above my um, route here. So let me just bring this down and you know what i think i should actually put this my anyway let's, let's just leave it like this but the cores needs to come on top of our route so that the um application the cores uh, policy can run before we get to our route i think that's what the problem is so let me save that and let's try to add a task one more time so i'll make sure that my server has started okay then i'll add the task aha so you see we don't get any error because and the task has cleared because it actually went so um what we need to do is we need to use our um insomnia to check so i'll come here and say get all task and then i'll just fire the back end route to see if that task was added and if i scroll down you see here we now have a womazino which is the task we just added so I think what we should do in the front end part of our website before we actually, you know, go to the next section is that after we add the task with this line of code, we should just do a toast so that, you know, there's a notification that the task has been added. So I'll say toast dot success and I'll just say task added successfully. Successfully like so. Yeah. And that's it. So save. Now, if I come back to my front end and I try to add another task, let's just say Zeno and then add. When that task is added, you see we get this notification task added successfully. So that's about it for how we can add a task to the database. In the next video, we're going to see how we can actually fetch the task from the database and display it on the screen. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.